So you've heard your doctors and therapists saying that your child has developed tone or your child has spasticity. But what exactly does that mean? Muscle tone is present in all of our muscles. A certain amount is healthy and keeps our muscles from being overstretched. It helps us to maintain an upright posture without even thinking about it. Muscle tone, however, can become a problem when there is either too much of it, as with hypertonia and spasticity, or when there is too little of it, as with hypotonia or flaccidity. Both can make moving in a controlled manner difficult. Spastic muscles are tight and may feel hard to the touch. You're feeling high tone if you try to stretch your child's arm and there seems to be a lot of resistance, even though your child isn't consciously resisting you. It can cause your child to hold his or her limb in an abnormal position that may limit function, such as with the elbow constantly flexed or the hand fisted. Your child may have developed spasticity for a number of reasons. Insult to the nervous system can result from a severe blow to the head or spinal cord, a stroke in utero, and many other developmental conditions. It is important to manage spasticity at home because over time, spastic muscles get used to being in a short position and begin to lose fibers. This makes it even diffi more difficult to stretch out the limb and can lead to permanent losses in joint deformity, which can greatly limit function. Your occupational or physical therapist is fantastic, no doubt, but seeing him or her a couple times a week is just not enough. It is important to develop a home program to regularly move all affected joints and muscles throughout the available range to maintain muscle length, prevent deformity, and decrease discomfort that spasticity may cause. The following is an adaptation of a simple explanation of spasticity from an article by Pete Levine. Muscle tone is regulated by signals from the brain. What has happened with spasticity is that somehow these signals have gotten disrupted and the brain can no longer effectively control the muscle. Originally, there is a period where the muscles have too low tone and the, spussle, and the, muscle, spussle, <laughs> the muscle spindle gets overstretched. The muscle then begins sending a message to the spinal cord, I'm being overstretched. This activates the reflex that causes muscles to flex to keep them from being overstretched. Normally, the signals from the brain to the muscle would turn off this signal, but as that pathway has been compromised, the brain just isn't as good as turning off this reflex as it should be. So the muscle just keeps flexing. The messages go on and on during most of waking hours and for some who sp suffer from spasticity during all but the deepest of sleep. Eventually, the muscle starts to lose fiber and the muscles that are held in a shortened position lose length. The process is an endless cycle that leads to the feeling of tightness that you have felt in a child's muscle. Look at more of my videos to see tips and strategies for helping to reduce the feelings of spasticity.